Houthi rebels in Yemen are claiming responsibility for multiple missile and drone attacks aimed at Israel. Earlier this week, the IDF said it intercepted a strike from Yemen. There are concerns that the Houthi rebels, who are backed by Iran, could draw the wider region into a battle between Israel and Hamas. So for more analysis, we want to bring in uh, Faria Al-Muslimi. He is a research fellow at Chatham House's Middle East and North Africa program. He's also a co-founder of the Sinai Center for Strategic Studies. It's a youth-led think tank aiming to bring new perspectives to Yemeni and regional affairs. Thank you so much for joining us. I think a lot of people will hear about the Houthi rebels and they will look on a map and see that Yemen is not a direct neighbor of Israel. In fact, it's quite kind of far on a map and they will be familiar with the clashes between the Houthi rebels and Saudi Arabia and wonder how they be, they're part of this conversation. So can you briefly explain to our viewers who the uh, Yemen Houthi rebels are? The Houthis are a Yemeni militia Zaidi group uh, that was actually launched six wars against the central government in Yemen between, between 2004 and 2010, obviously with the support of Iran. In 2015, in 2014, they took over the Yemeni capital by force and uh, ousted the internationally recognized government. After that, in 2015, Saudi Arabia, with the support of the United States, United Kingdom, started a big massive war on Yemen to try to out, take the group out of the capital, a military group, a military operation that actually ultimately ended up empowering the Houthis. In these all years, the Houthis have had a relationship with Iran. It is more, more uh, significant at the moment than it was in the past, and it is supported definitely by Iran. Right now, they are considered the axis of resistance in the Red Sea supporting or finishing the map of Iran in the Middle East, which is, includes Lebanon, Iraq, Syria, and uh, Palestine, and some other parts. So definitely they are an Iranian proxy to a huge point in Yemen, and they are right now a, a group that uh, basically is in a war with Saudi Arabia and a bunch of Gulf countries. I think it's an important point that you're making, which uh, I think, you know, you should, uh, I, I, would, I would ask that you clarify that for our viewers, because uh, one of the things that is, uh, not very clear for people is the kind of role that Iran is playing mm -hmm. in this Israel-Hamas conflict. Uh, we've, uh, are we essentially looking at no, multiple proxies for Iran, both in Hezbollah, which is in southern Lebanon, uh, Hamas in the Gaza Strip, um, and now we're talking about Yemen? Absolutely. Iran has uh, launched uh, various proxies in the region and it definitely fights these wars via um, uh, uh, these proxies, whether that's in Iraq or in Yemen, as you said. And definitely the Houthis for Iran is a very cheap proxy in a sense that they invested very little in them compared to Hezbollah or to Hamas, but they basically have become a quite a significant power. So Iran does not necessarily practice a direct command and control with the Houthi, on the Houthis, similar to the Hezbollah one or to the Hamas, but absolutely, they have a huge coordination. They are now part of the axis. And definitely, the Middle East has been going through a bunch of a proxy wars in, in the region. And I think that's proxy wars in some ways are more destructive than direct wars. And that's what we have seen in Yemen, because Iran can hit, and it can hit Iran, it can, uh, Israel, it can hit Saudi Arabia, it can hit Western ships in the Red Sea without any responsibility, and obviously with the ability to say we are not behind this. It is. It would be extremely naive and stupid to think that the Houthis would launch this attack without Iran. However, it's by now the Houthis do act in coordination with Hamas. It, it does act in coordination with Hezbollah every now and then. But it is also a, a, a group that has would not have emerged into the reality if Iran did not support it since 2004, but specifically since 2015. Their drone capabilities, their ballistic missile capabilities, all of this has been actually uh, uh, highly supported in influence and trained and built by the Iranians. In fact, at one point in December 2021, it even led the United States of America to kill uh, via drones, via an airstrike, the Iranian ambassador to Sana'a, who is also a part of the Revolutionary uh, Guard of Iran. And so it was a small investment. It's a huge now, and it's not any less problematic than Hezbollah or Hamas, simply because it threatens 10% of the global trade in Bab al-Mandab. And that is something will affect or can have a huge risk on Western uh, interests, but also on the flow of oil and business from the Middle East to the entire world. So let me ask you then about 
As you know, the U.S. Navy earlier this month shot down projectiles believed to have come from Yemen. Uh, there have uh, The president of the United States has said that the United States is not going to put any boots on the ground in this conflict that is happening between Israel uh, and uh, Hamas in the Gaza Strip. However, if Iran is playing this game and using these proxies and inadvertently there is an attack on a U.S. warship uh, or any American interest, could Iran be drawn into this in a more overt position? Or would they not dare risk that kind of engagement with the United States, her allies, and even Israel? I think Iran is uh, trickier than being directly involved in a war like this. So what it will do is, like in the past, it will offshore these responses to the Houthis or to other uh, proxies in the region, especially also Iraq at the moment. And I think it will, in fact, activate the Houthis because it's less important to them, for example, let's say, compared to Hezbollah or compared to Hamas or compared to Al-Assad regime in Syria. This is in, in not a new in the sense that the Houthis, when this war started in Gaza, they were very clear that if the United States of America gets involved in the region, then we will strike back. Ten days later, they immediately did that. This is a fundamental importance for the Houthis because they do, uh, in their own self, worldview about themselves, they find the United States of America uh, the same as Israel. They find them both as an occupation country. So hence, absolutely any American involvement as it has been happening in the region will only uh, drive more proxies to respond, including the Houthis, but absolutely not exclusive to them uh, in, in, in that regard. But, but not Iran. I doubt, but you know, in the Middle East, we say never say never. <laughs> so if things anyway comes, um, um, you know, if you have an open front line that comes from Syria, Lebanon, Iraq, I wouldn't be surprised in a massive war. I think it depends a little bit on how Israel will respond and how it will respond to the Houthis so far and the Americans. I doubt the United States of America or the Houthi or the Israelis will get in a massive open new front line in Yemen. However, what they might do is like they have done in the past, is probably go through, uh, uh, do a specific targeted assassinations to the Houthi leaders in Yemen and inside Yemen. That is probably, most probably the way Iran, uh, Israel will respond into this. Because responding in a massive new front line, first, is not going to do well, but second, is going to create a lot of popularity for the Houthis uh, inside Yemen if they are in a direct war with Israel, or it's similarly for Iran. But so far, Iran has had a very good strategy of low-cost proxies, hmm. and that means strike, hit, and run away. The Houthis will not necessarily go into uh, huge ballistic attacks like Hezbollah or Hamas, as you said, because they are also far, and the geography is 2,000 kilometers. But most likely what they will do is attack ships and business interests in, in Bab al-Mandab and in the Red Sea. And they will do similar to the attacks they did against UAE in, 2000, uh, in 2022 which is two to three strikes every now and then, enough to say, we can hit you too. Enough to create that level of paranoia and enough to basically force themselves in a mafia style into the world conversation and into being a geopolitical player for the benefit of Iran, but also for their own benefit domestically in Yemen. Mm. All right, Farah Al-Musini, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Always.